for that. Um, Brother Mills, just mute the, the lower, yeah, the lower parts. Yeah, you'd be good on the back, Mike. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks for He has given Jesus Christ His Son. Unto the Lord 
for all his benefits toward me. All his blessings, his benefits toward me. Is that what your Bible says? Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray you to your truth, your word. Speak to our hearts now, Lord. Help us to hear from you. Father, decrease me that you might increase. Speak to and through me, God, that you might be heard, seen, and glorified in our midst today. In Jesus' name we say amen. 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 Thank you. You see that. I want to share from the subject taken from that verse, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me. I want to share from the subject, what can I give back? Amen. What can I give back? The some that said, what shall I return? What shall I render? What shall I give back unto the Lord? Amen. And and, and we celebrate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who, who was selfish, who was a servant, and who sacrificed. And we celebrate the veterans today who were selfless and who were servants as well as sacrificed for this great nation that, in which we live. But today, God is calling all of us as believers to count our many blessings and see what the Lord has done. Has the Lord done great things for us? Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Not just today, but what? Every day. And this is a day of giving thanks. And God requires us to give thanks, but so many don't understand uh, the importance of giving thanks. When you are when you are thankful to somebody who has uh, blessed you or done something for you that you couldn't do for yourself, it, 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 if you just say thank you to them, it does it does a lot by way of showing your appreciative your appreciativeness uh, toward them for what has been done. Because we realize that we can't do it all by ourselves. We realize that we didn't get here by ourselves, and we need people in our lives and be able to say thank you. Amen. You know, a lot of times folks are uh, getting a meal and they don't even ask God or uh, say thank you to God for the meal in which they're about to receive. Amen. They don't even say thank you, they don't even ask God to bless it. <laughs> Make it nourishment for the body. Amen. And, 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 and then people wonder uh, why they feel a whole lot the way they do after they eat what they eat. You know, some, some stuff nasty, you better pray over it. Amen. <laughs> some people nasty, you better, you better pray over it too. Yeah, folk nasty, trust me. I, I've worked in the restaurant uh, business, and I've seen what people do behind the scene. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and you don't know what they do when you send your food back. <laughs> Amen. So, so it's, it's always good to ask God's blessings over it. Amen. Amen. But nevertheless, here we find the psalmist here talking about giving praise for deliverance from death. And, and so when we break this psalm up, we break it up into four parts. And, and the first part I want us to take a look at is the, uh, the declaration of his person. The declared person. I want you to look at the declaration of his person. See, the psalmist de declared in verse 1 and 2, he said, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Why do he love the Lord? He said, because he hath heard my voice and my supplication. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. This is a declaration of his person to the point, not the psalmist, but in, to the point in whom he lifting his voice up to. And he says it is the capital L-O-R-D, Lord, Jehovah God, amen. The Elohim, the strong one. The El Shaddai, the strong breasted one, the, the nourisher. And when you can declare who is the person in your life that you understand, you can love them because he first loved us. Isn't that what uh, the scripture says? We love God because why? He first loved us. In fact, Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have what? 
everlasting life. See, you would not know how to love yourself nor others at first. You didn't know how to love God. Can I get a witness? Why? Because the Bible declares that God is love. And everyone that loves is love of God. Now, this is the type of love that we call agape love. It's not a brother of phileo love. Phileo love is a brother agape love, meaning unconditional. And God loves us unconditionally. And so, first thing we got to do is declare who is the person of our love. And I'm going to tell you something. Many people love God just because he does something for them. Amen. Amen. But see, the, the songwriter said, just because of who he is, we are to give him glory. Just because of who he is, we are to give him praise. Just because of who he is, we are to love him because he thought enough of us to bend his ear down and hear our cry. Has anybody ever cried out to the Lord? Yes. And wanted the Lord to hear from them. You remember the children in Egypt, um, uh, the children of Israel, when they was in bondage in Egypt, they they cried and they cried by reasons of the taskmaster. And the Bible declared that God heard their prayers. He inclined his ear unto their prayers. He heard their cries. God hears your cries. God hears your, your groanings. He hears your moaning. He, he, hears, he hears the complaints that causes us to stay awake sometime late in the middle of the night. And when it seems like everybody else in the house is sleeping and you are agony and pain, nobody seems to understand what you're going through. The Lord hears your prayers. And the psalmist declared that he is the one I love, the one that hear me and listens to me when I start to talk to other folk and they don't want to hear me complaining all the time. They don't want to always hear me talk about how bad I feel. They don't want to always hear me talk about what I'm going through because we know the truth be told. There are other folks who are going through stuff worse than we are. And when we come to talk to them about our stuff, then they going through stuff. They ain't got time to focus on your stuff when my stuff is just as bad. Can I get a witness? But there's somebody named Jesus who you can tell about all that you're going through. And he sits high and he looks low. And we all can flood the heavens at the same time. But God has a way to hear y'all of about prayer. Amen. Don't he? Yes. And so we love the Lord. We, we, we declare he's a person that we can fall in love with. Amen. You know, just in the fact of the matter that he heard my voice. You know, you know, he's not like us. We call ID. When you know you don't talk to this person, all they did that time you talked to them, the second time you talked to them, the third time, all they did was complain about it. You say, I ain't answering that fourth call. No, they go to force mail. Y'all don't tell me you ain't did that. Say amen, church. Because you know what it's going to be. When they call, you already know what it's going to be. When you Sometimes you feel like you're afraid to even ask for how you doing. Amen. Can they give you a list? Amen. <laughs> so. Are you with me? Yes. But aren't we glad that the Lord ain't like that? Amen. He never get tired of listening to his children. Amen. 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 And the psalmist said, because he listened to me, yes. unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. And see, when you can declare his person, brothers and sisters, you can call on the law when you can't call on your pastor. Amen. You can call on the law when you can't call on your family. Amen. You can call on the law when you can't call on your friends. Amen. Amen. When, 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 when the pastor don't give you a call when you're going through your stuff, when the deacon don't give you a call when you're going through stuff, but that doesn't tell you something. There's somebody who sits high and looks low who never slumbers, nor does he sleep. Amen. Amen. That's who you ought to love. That's the person we can declare. Oh, what a mighty God yes. we serve. Can I get a witness? Yes. But then he moves from the declaration of his person to the description of his problems. 
The descriptions of his problem. Notice in verse 3 what were the descriptions of his problem. The descriptions of his problem said they, the sorrows of death surrounded him. The sorrows of death come past me. And did anybody have you been so low in the valley of depression and despair and you felt like death was all around you? You felt like this could be it. You felt like this is it. I've been in this so, so long and I've gone through this so long. I can feel the presence and the sorrows of death all around me. Hmm. In fact, in the matter, he said, not only the sorrows of death surround me, he said, but, but the pains of hell, <laughs> the distresses of, of, of hell, Sheol, has got hold of me, has laid hold of me. In other words, he, he, he felt like death was knocking on his door and all that he was going through, hell, <laughs> felt like hell. Has anybody ever been in this life who said, somebody asked you, what's going on? You said, I'm going through hell. Y'all ever, y'all ain't, when, when you dealt with stuff and felt like you're going through hell, you felt like you're dealing with folk, you've been going through hell every time you turn around. I don't know if you know what hell is like. Scripture gives us a, a vivid picture of what hell is like. But I'm telling you something. Whatever we're going through on earth, it ain't hell. Amen. Amen. But it could be close to it. Amen. But the psalmist said, death was surprised around me, and it feels like it got a hold of me and pulling me into the pains of hell. Everything that is in hell is coming up and grabbing hold of me. But then he says, I found trouble and sorrow. You see the descriptions of his problem? Death surrounds him. Hell, the pain of hell got a hold of him. All he can feel, brothers and sisters, the only thing that he found when he looked on the right hand and on the left hand, he looked front, he looked back, he looked down, he looked up, and all he found was trouble. And sorrow. <clears throat> and so that was indeed the descriptions of his problem. But let me tell you something. Let us see. That was A, the, the declaration of his person. B, the description of his problems. But let me tell you, C, the deliverance in praise. But there is deliverance in praise. I don't care when you know the person that you are in love with. It doesn't matter what the problem that you can describe. How many of you know that when you can go to your loving God, the one that loves you in spite of you, the one that you love because you know he loves you, Amen. that when the description, the problem that describe your life, the thing that got a hold of you, you can take your burden to the Lord yeah. and you can begin to talk to God about it. But then all of a sudden you realize how bigger your God is than your problems. Yeah. You stop going to God and telling him about your problems and go to your problem and tell him about your God. Right. Can I get a witness? See, a lot of us, we talk to God about our problems rather than talk to the problem about God. See, when you start telling your problem about God, you can find reason to give him praise because yeah. There are deliverance in what you say coming out of your mouth. Can I get a witness? Since you find yourself always in problems and pain and going through what you're going through, and all you can talk about is what you're going through. All you can talk about is the problem. All you can talk about is the pain. I want you to know you're praising that pain. Now, now some of you might say, no, I ain't praising that pain, but it's not talking about it. And take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. It's all going to your problem. So I'm going to that problem that causes your pain and say, trouble don't last always. That the scriptures say, I know is here, but it's come to pass. It didn't come to stay because I learned that they're delivering in praise. And when I praise God, can I get a witness? The blessings of God will come down. So notice what the psalmist did. 
when the psalmist was able to declare his person. And he then gave a description of the problem. Oh, but then the deliverance came in his praise. Notice what he said in verse 4. He said, when the problems and the pain and all of that stuff came, past the all surround me is death. Pains of hell got a hold of me. I found trouble on the right hand, the left hand, everywhere I turned. All I found was trouble and sorrow. But then verse 4, the deliverance began to come into view. He said, then called I upon the Lord. <laughs> Do y'all see it? He yeah. said, then called I upon the name of the Lord. You don't understand this, but let me help you. Throughout this psalm, there is the declaration of this person. Notice, notice what he said in verse 1 again. The Lord. I love who? The Lord. You see it? Yeah. Then notice what he said in verse 4. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord. You see it? Yeah. Verse 5, it said, gracious is the Lord. You see it? Yeah. Verse 6, the Lord preserves. You see it? Yeah. Return unto rest, O oh my soul, for the Lord hath death. You see it? Yeah. I wish I had a witness in. Y'all don't see it. Yeah. But then he said in verse 9, I will walk before who? The Lord. Oh, verse verse uh, uh, 12, what shall I render unto the Lord? Verse 13, I will call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. Verse 14, I will pay my vow unto the Lord. All right. Verse 15, press in the sight of the Lord, the Lord. Verse 16, O oh Lord, truly I am the servant. Verse 17, look at the end, and we are called upon the name of the Lord. Verse 18, I will pay my vow unto the Lord. You see it? Verse 19, in the courts of the Lord. You see, he knows who he's talking to. Right. He knows who the Lord is. Yes. Men that don't even know who the Lord is. So they don't know the call on the Lord. Amen. When they got a description of problems that got a hold of them. That's right. Oh, but then, because you know who the Lord is. Yes. You know who his person is. Yes. But deliverance come in his praise. Notice in verse 4, here's what he said. He said, then call I upon the Lord. O Lord, I beseech you to deliver my soul. When your soul going through what you're going through, and you know there is a deliverer. But guess what? That deliverer is there, but sometimes deliverance don't come until you open up your mouth and start acknowledging who he is. And begin to praise him for who he is. Can I get a witness? The, the, the song that said in the very last Psalm 150, he said, let everything that have breath praise who? The Lord. Can I get a witness? And so in verse 4, he said, there is a deliverance in our praise. The song that said, gracious is the Lord. How many of you know that's praise? Can I get a witness? He said, gracious is the Lord and righteous. He prays to him for his graciousness and his righteousness. And then not only, not only that, but he said, our God is what? Merciful. Or he giving him praise for his graciousness, for his um, righteousness as well as his mercy. But then look with me at verse 6. He said, in another form of praise, he said, the Lord preserveth the simple. I oh, wish I had that. If I ever call you simple-minded? Let me not call you ever. Have you ever, have you ever called somebody simple minded? But look what he said. The Lord preserved the simple. And notice what it is. He said, I was brought low. And guess what the Lord did? He helped me. You know what? What did he do? He lifted me. He saved me. Ah, has anybody ever been brought down and you realize that you were on your way down and you were closer to the ground and you were closer to the air and you found like that you didn't have no way up but then the Lord, he reached out his hand and saved you. Do you remember Peter when he said to Jesus, uh, Lord, Master, if it be you, be it me to come. And Jesus said, come and Peter began to walk on the water and then Peter began to take his eye off, the, off Jesus and he put his eyes on the wind that blew the waves and, and he put his eyes on the water. Can I get a witness? And all of a sudden, Peter began to sink. But Peter, he cried out, 
the Lord saved me. How many of Jesus reached out his hand and, and he saved Peter. He picked yes. Peter up and the next thing you know, Peter and Jesus walked back to the boat. Now, some of you might be feeling like you're going down for your last time, but if you call on Jesus and Lord, I, I need you to save me. Lord, I know you're gracious. Lord, I know you able to do all things but fail. Lord, I know you merciful. I know you can make a way for me out of nowhere. Lord, I need your help. And I need to quit in a hurry. And how do you know that when you were down, that the Lord, he picked you up. When you had your back up against the wall, the Lord moved the wall. Anybody know that when you were going through your trials and tribulation of God, he made a highway out just like that. Somebody say yeah. yeah. But deliverance come in when we praise God. Notice what else he said. He said in verse 7, he said unto his soul, he said, soul, return unto your rest. Can I get a witness? Yeah. He said, because the Lord, he hath dealt bountifully. The Lord, he hath been generous to me. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Have you ever felt like you didn't deserve anything? You ever felt like that nothing good should come your way? Yeah. But you discover something about the graciousness and the righteousness of God. Yeah. You discover something about the mercy of God. You discover how God is able to preserve, to preserve the simple. You are able to know how God can lift you up when you cry out yeah. unto him for his help. Anybody know God can show up and then all of a sudden when the Lord shows up have you ever felt like your soul now can go back to rest when it used to be wired up it used to be in a whole lot of fear and distress but all of a sudden God you feel the hand of God holding you up you feel the hand of God all around you you feel the hand of God laid upon you and you feel the presence of God the one that you can declare he is God and not nobody else can I give you witness and you feel God feeling all around you and you start to feel good down on the inside and the next thing you can say now I lay me down to sleep now I pray the Lord my soul to keep if I should die before I wake I pray the Lord my soul he take can I give you witness you can go down down and lay down and get a good night's rest can I give you witness some of you ain't rested in a long time you've been dealing with problems on every hand but I stopped by to tell you take the time out to give God some praise take the time out to tell the Lord you've been mighty good to me take the time out to thank the Lord for being can I get a witness? Even when the storm is all around the boat, thank God that the storm ain't in me. Can I get a witness? Trouble may come all around, but I thank God that the trouble ain't in me. The my God, He's able to lift me up. He's able to pull me through. Somebody say that. Now your soul can go back and take its rest because the Lord God, He's bountiful. The Lord God is generous. Is that what He says? But then notice what He says in verse 8. He said, The Lord has delivered my soul from death. Now He said, My soul. Earlier, He said, The pains of death got a hold of me. But He now began to praise the Lord God for His graciousness. He praised Him for his righteousness can I get a witness he began to praise him um, for his mercy and then he began to praise him because he is a preserver he began to praise him because he helped him and he began to tell his soul so you can now take it easy go back to your rest because the Lord has been generous unto me and then verse 8 he said for the Lord has delivered 
deliver my soul from death. I ain't got to worry about death. He said, my eyes, he deliver my eyes from tears. How many you find yourself crying at night? You find yourself drinking tears for water. How many you find yourself crying all night long? That the Lord will help you through what you're going through. But come on, y'all. I want you to know the son that said, I got a deliverance in my praise. He wiped away all my tears. Won't he do it, y'all? Yes, he will. But then notice what else he said. Not only did he dry up all my tears, but he keep my feet from falling. Have anybody been walking and you just can't seem to keep your balance? It seems like every time you try to take uh, a step forward, uh, you begin to take two steps back. You just can't seem to get your balance on track. But let me tell you about a God. If you praise him because he is gracious, you praise him because of his righteousness. You praise him because he's merciful. You praise him because he's a keeper. You praise him because he's a savior. He'll deliver you. You can tell your soul. You can rest now. But God is he's generous and he's a blesser. Can I get a witness? He will make a way for you. Out of no way. Somebody say yeah. The Bible declares uh, in verse 9, he said, I will walk before the Lord as in the land of the living. Can I get a witness? Because verse 10, he said, I bleed, therefore I have spoken. I was greatly afflicted. He said, yeah, I was greatly afflicted. Yeah, I went through a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, I got knocked down and I thought I wasn't going to get up. I got knocked down so low that the death was all around me. And hell got had a hold on me. And everywhere I turned, all I found was trouble yes. and sorrow. But when I start praising God, tell him how gracious he is. Tell him how I appreciate his righteousness. Tell him how I thank him for his mercy. I want the Lord to know he is my keeper. And yes, I was down low, but he lifted me up. Now my soul is taking it easy. Somebody say yeah. He said in verse 12, when I look back over my life and I began to take inventory and I see how good God has been. In fact, no matter, I see how good God is right now. He said, what shall I give back unto the Lord for all of his benefits toward me? Can I get a witness? Anybody know God gives us new mercies every day? Can I get a witness? God gives us new blessings every day. Yesterday's blessings were good for yesterday. Can I get a witness? But today is a new day. And the Lord gives me new mercies. He gives me new blessings. He said, what can I give back? Because the Lord's been blessing me. What can I give back? But the God I serve, he's making a way for me. Notice what the son is saying. The son is saying, here's what I do. And my fourth thing and my last thing, he said, I'll make a decision of promise. Yes, when he got a declaration of person, and he gave a description of problem, he began to get a deliverance in praise. Can I get a witness? And when God delivers you through your praise, you got to make a decision of promise. And you began to promise the Lord. Lord, you've been good to me. You brought me from a mighty long way. So what did the psalmist say? The psalmist said in verse 13, Here's what I decide to promise. I decide to promise I will. I'll take up the cup of salvation. I'll take up the cup of blessings. I'll take up the blessings of deliverance. Can I get a witness? And anybody in here, if you want to know what to put in your cup, put in your cup the blessings of deliverance. Because God is, he's the one that delivers you. Can I get a witness? And so then, so then the son that said, not only would I take up the cup of salvation, but verse 14, he said, 
said, I'll pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all people. Can I get a witness? So as I close, if you want to know what to give back, let me tell you what to give back. You give back to God the sacrifice of trust. Can I get a witness? Make up in your mind that you are going to trust in the Lord. That's what the son is saying. The son said, I'm going to take up the cup of salvation. In other words, I'm going to pay my vow in the presence of the people unto the Lord. He said, I'm going to trust in the Lord. Isn't that what Solomon is saying? He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not to your own understanding. Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways. And what will he do? He'll direct your path. Anybody in here, can you make a declaration of praise or deliverance of praise that will bring back a decision of promise that you're going to give back your trust? That's what the Lord wants. Yes. The Lord wants you to trust Him. The Lord wants you to never worry about it. The Lord don't want you to lean into your own understanding. The Lord wants you to trust Him. That old song I say, I will trust in the Lord. Can I get a witness yes. until I die? Y'all don't hear me. Is there anybody in here? Are you trusting in the Lord? Yes. Is the Lord a way maker? Can I get a witness? Yes. The Lord bless you. The Lord kept you. So you can trust him. And the Lord did it for you one time. You need to trust that he can do it again. Yes. Can I get a witness? Can he do it? Yes. Won't he do it? Yes. I'm so glad. Because I see what Jesus has done for me. I can give him my trust. I will not trust in a sweet frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is seeking sand. I trust in Jesus. I trust in the Lord. I trust him when I'm up. I trust him when I'm down. I trust him when I'm in. I trust him when I'm out. I trust him when I'm sick. I trust him when I'm well. If anybody in here can give God your trust, somebody say, yeah, I trust the Lord. I know you know what's best for me. Somebody say, yeah. But not only are you give him your trust, but you give him your treasure. Somebody say, yeah. What do you mean? Preacher, but verse 6 15, he said, Precious in the sight of the Lord. Can I get it in the sight of the Lord? Can I get a witness? In the death of the saints, notice that the son is saying, His soul was near death, and his soul had a the hell had a grip on his soul. But he was able to tell his soul, Go and rest now, because he realized that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Anybody know what kind of treasure you got? This soul that's on the inside of these yeah. earthen vessels, they're more valuable than silver and gold. Can I get a witness? Yeah. When you trust God with your treasure, you give him back your treasure. What do he want? He wants your soul. Give him back your soul. If you trust him, you ought to know that his treasure in him is all right. Jesus said, lay not up for yourself upon the earth. Your treasure where there are rust and thieves. Can I get a witness? But lay your treasure up in heaven where the thieves cannot steal and the rust cannot decay. Can I get a witness? I put my trust in Jesus. I put my treasure in Jesus. It ain't the money in my pocket, but it's the soul in my body. Can I get a witness that this soul is a treasure because God said it's precious. I wish I had a witness. Do you know that you are valuable? Do you know that you are worth more than silver and gold? Do you know that you are worth more than rubies and pearls? Do you you are precious. Give them back your treasure. Give them back your trust. And when you do that, verse 17, he tells us, not only we to give them our 
treasure. Not only are we to give him our treasure, he said, but we ought to give him our thanksgiving. Can I get a witness? In verse 17, uh, he said, I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to give him back. I wish I had a witness. My thanksgiving, I'm going to tell the Lord, thank you for being so good to me. i got to just come and tell you, thank you. Do you remember the ten lepers? When God, uh, when Jesus told them to go show yourself unto the priest, uh, and then they went, uh, the Bible declared that they all began to look at their hands, uh, and their hands looked new. They began to look at their feet, uh, and their feet did, the feet did too. But then one of them, uh, can I get a witness, uh, he went back and fell down at the feet of Jesus uh, and said, I just have to come back to tell you, thank you. Jesus said, wasn't a ten of you? Jesus said, well, where is the nine? The man, I don't know where they at. I can't worry about them. But God, you've been good to me. I've seen how you took care of me. I know how you healed my body. I know how you made a way for me. I know how you made a way for my family. And Lord, I learned to trust you a long time ago. I learned to give you my treasure a long time ago. But Lord, I every day I'm learning to give you thanks. I'm more thankful today than I was yesterday. If anybody feel like that, that you thank God yesterday, but because He gave you a new day, you got to more thanks. Can I get a witness? He bless you even the most, so you gotta tell the Lord thank you. But then verse 19, and then I'll take my clothes. Not only we give back trust, not only we give back treasure, not only we do we give back thankfulness, but brothers and sisters, we gotta give back testimony. Can I get a witness? Verse 19 said he will praise the Lord. He'll testify the Lord in the presence of all the people in the court of the Lord. Can I get a witness? Some of you are scared to tell somebody how good God's been to you. You don't want to tell nobody because you don't want nobody to know that you've been going through. But I got a story that I got to tell. His name is Jesus that kept me from hell. Somebody say yeah. His name is Jesus who walked with me and talked to me. His name is Jesus who saved my soul. His name is Jesus who put healing in my body. His name is Jesus who is a company keeper. His name is Jesus who hung out there on that old rugged cross. His name is Jesus who can put in a bar or two. His name is Jesus who got up on the third on the third day. Can I get a witness right early in the morning? Somebody say, yeah. Anybody got a testimony? How many of you know that you can overcome when you tell somebody about a man named Jesus? Let me tell you about Jesus. He loved it when he heard his name roll out the lips of his people. Can I get a witness? But can't nobody do us like Jesus? Can't nobody. Get it back. 